फिजियोस आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू आर चैनल फिजियो विद्यापीठ वी आर बैक विद अवर थर्ड लेक्चर ऑन लेजर थेरेपी एंड हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट दी टाइप्स ऑफ लेजर ओके सो इट इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट एंड यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट टू हैव अ लॉन्ग आंसर टाइप क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट ओके सो माई नेम इज विजय कुमार एंड लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड so the first type is the ruby laser okay ruby laser and uh, i one thing that i want to suggest you is that before watching this particular lecture you need to watch the previous lecture in which i have explained the principle and production of laser so you will be uh, understanding this concept more easily okay so let's start ruby laser the ruby laser here we use a ruby rod for the production of laser so that thing that is the ruby rod is made up of aluminium oxide that is al2o3 and this thing will be our lacing medium okay so the medium from which laser will be emitted in ruby laser is al2o3 okay and its wavelength will be around 693.4 nanometer and it will give a red laser beam okay so let us see the structure of this particular laser please you need to zoom on to this particular diagram okay you can see this is a rod this rod is ruby rod which is made up of al2o3 and around it this blue one is a helical helical flash tube that is made up of xenon okay so there is a flash tube tube which is wrapped around it next is that this particular end is fully silvered and this is partially silvered that is this will totally reflect but this will partially reflect and give the output that is the laser beam as we have studied in previous lecture okay so when we will give the power supply to this particular laser a brief light impulse of 0.5 second okay it will help to produce the excite the excite the electrons to emit the photons which will produce the laser beam okay so this is very important and easy to understand okay so what is this this is the xenon tube this end is fully silvered this end is partially silvered when we give the give the brief flash of impulse then electrons will be stimulated to produce photons and it is emitted as laser beam and this is whole about the red ruby laser next is the helium neon laser it is similar to the previous one except two things that is its wavelength is 632.8 nanometer or in some books it is written as 633 nanometer and here lacing medium is uh, helium and neon mixture okay that is the gaseous mixture so here you can see that this one is a tube inside tube there is mixture of helium and neon and again a flash tube is wrapped around it when we give again a brief impulse of flash it will stimulate or excite the helium and neon atoms to produce uh, the so that the electron move from ground state to the higher energy state and produce photons which are regarded as the laser beam from the partially silvered end and whole and uh, other things are as same as to the previous one okay so these two are very similar in diagram and you can draw diagram for it another important thing which i want to explain you is that let us say there is an atom okay in my previous lecture i explained you that when electron move from lower energy to the higher energy level okay that is our previous lecture we uh, electron was moving from lower energy level to higher energy level and during this process there will be some time you need to understand the line ki during the process of this excitation that is moving of electron from lower energy to higher energy level there will be some time when most of the electrons okay so there will be another atom also okay like this another atom this is another atom okay so there will be time when all or most of the electrons are in excited state and that time when all the electrons or most of electron 
आर मूव टू द हायर एनर्जी स्टेट विच मीन्स हायर एनर्जी लेवल इज हैविंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन दिस थिंग इज कॉल्ड पॉपुलेशन इनवर्जन ओके पॉपुलेशन इनवर्जन दिस कैन बी वन थ्री मार्क्स क्वेश्चन और वाइवा बेस्ड क्वेश्चन पॉपुलेशन इनवर्जन Why it is called population inversion? Because the electron which must be in the stable or the lower energy level is moved to the higher energy level, and when most of the atoms are having its electron in the higher energy level during the process of production of laser, it is called population inversion, and that's all about ruby laser and helium neon laser. Next is our infrared laser or diode laser. its wavelength is 830 nanometer and in some books it is written from 630 to 15000 uh, 1550 nanometer okay and its medium is gallium and arsenic or gallium aluminium arsenic that is the pn junction diode okay so this is the diagram it is very easy please just zoom towards this particular part see this is the diagram of diode laser okay so this upper part it is having n type gallium arsenic below it there is a plate which is having gallium aluminium arsenic and again these two are n type okay so there are two n terminals that is n type gallium arsenic and n type gallium aluminium arsenic and on the lower side there is t type but same thing this is p type gallium aluminium arsenic and this is p type gallium arsenic and between these two there is gallium and arsenic okay which is this big part okay so first one is n type gallium arsenic second is n type gallium aluminium arsenic then this bigger one is bigger one is gallium arsenic and lower one is p type gallium aluminium arsenic and p type gallium arsenic this one is metal plate this one is also metal plate which is connected to the power supply one is cathode one is anode okay and whenever we will give the current to this so from the n type there will be electrons and from the p type holes will be produced and its interaction will further produce laser beam which will be emitted from partially silvered end and this one is fully silvered end that is reflection will move the laser beam that is photon to move out from the partially silvered end okay and they are they are small and cheap so they are one of the most commonly used type of laser in our in our clinics okay and this diode laser why it is called infrared laser okay because it is of two type it can so another important thing that i want to correct is that in the infrared that is the diode laser where i have explained the uh, long wave and short wave that is the long wavelength diode laser and short wavelength diode laser see the short wavelength diode laser have its wavelength less than 1 micrometer so it is close to the visible region so definitely some visible uh, radiation will be produced along with ir and here the infrared will be near ir because because it is close to the visible spectrum but in case of the uh, long wavelength diode laser it will produce it it has the wavelength greater than 1 micrometer and it will be it will be more away from the visible region okay so it is less visible and it produce produce the ir which is uh, we can say uh, mid ir okay mid ir we can say because it is away from the visible region so it produce mid ir so on the board i have written it produce more visible so you need to correct that it is less visible and produce mid ir radiations next is super luminous diode it is uh, it is further more used type of the laser but there is one problem that is the super luminous diode are not true laser they are monochromatic yes this was one of the important property yes monochromatic means at a particular wavelength and frequency there will be a single specific color and it is collimated also what was the meaning of collimated collimated means 
that wave will transmit in a straight direction that, that is pencil like beam okay pencil beam of laser is produced so wave will move in a straight direction and it is not coherent but coherent was of two types coherent was of two type that is spatial coherence and temporal coherence it was spatial coherence and temporal coherence and if you have watched my previous lecture you must know that the property of collimated that is collimation property that is the property of laser beam to move in a straight line having a pencil like beam it is due to spatial coherence it is due to spatial coherence which is present but the another type of coherence which was temporal coherence which said that peak of electric and magnetic wave are at same time and their fall is also at same time that is they were in phase this property is not present that is temporal coherence is not present in the super luminous diode that is electric and magnetic field are not in phase which means they are out of phase that is jab ye upar ja raha hai to shayad ye thoda niche hi ho aur jab ye niche ja raha hai shayad ye thoda कम नीचे जा रहा हो जो वेव का पैटर्न है वो सिमेट्रिकल नहीं है कि दोनों इकट्ठे ऊपर गए इकट्ठे नीचे गए ऐसा नहीं है सो टेम्पोरल कोहरेंस इज लॉस्ट ऑल्सो दे आर स्मॉलर इन साइज एंड दे कैन बी यूज एज अ हैंड हेल्ड एप्लीकेटर फॉर स्मॉलर एरिया एंड वी कैन यूज द नंबर ऑफ नंबर ऑफ सुपर लुमिनस डायोर्ड विच आर माउंटेड टूगेदर टू फॉर्म अ क्लस्टर प्रो सो इट लुक लाइक दिस सो अ लॉट ऑफ सुपर लुमिनस डायोड आर माउंटेड एंड दिस कैन बी यूज फॉर लार्जर एरिया ट्रीटमेंट ओके ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ लार्जर एरिया एंड दिस इज होल अबाउट द सुपर ल्यूमिनस डायोड लेजर ओके सो वी हैव कंप्लीटेड ऑल द फोर इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ लेजर विच वॉज रूबी लेजर वट इज द वेव लेंथ सिक्स नाइनटी फोर पॉइंट थ्री वट इज द मीडियम ए एल टू ओ थ्री ओके डायग्राम इट इज सिंपल दैट इज इन द प्रोडक्शन okay here also diagram is simple but there is one change in the uh, in the part where i have written ruby rod that is al2o3 you need to just write gaseous mixture helium and neon and whole another thing is same and this is particularly different diagram so n type p type and in between there is gallium arsenic and one is cathode one is anode and what electrons and holes are there they will interact to produce the laser beam and super luminous diode they are monochromatic yes collimated yes non coherent and which coherence is lost temporal coherence is lost okay so this was about the type of lasers in our next lecture we will move further toward the laser therapy till then you keep on studying thank you to one and all